Come with us as we discover little-known auto collections. Drive through mansion gates. Race multi-million dollar classics and hobnob with the owners of the world's most exclusive automobiles. Find out what it's like to drive the world's fastest, most expensive and desirable exotic automobiles. The mecca for exotic autos is the annual Concorde d'Elegance held at Pebble Beach, California. Its title tells you that it's more than just a car show. It's the gathering point for the largest array of stunningly restored fine automobiles in the world. There's something here that's sure to delight anyone. These cars represent the epitome of style and design, and that's what it's all about, elegance. So uh, I, I think you, you don't have to be an enthusiast to like it. The opportunity to see cars like the fabled Bugatti Atlantique attracts the crowds every year, as well as celebrity collectors and a host of other very rich people. This is a serious lifestyle. This is. Uh... This isn't I've made my first hit on the on the stock exchange or an internet internet IPO or this is I've created some serious wealth. Pebble Beach and other similar events around the world offer these serious collectors a chance to mingle with their auto loving friends. They can even kick a few tires and check out a potential next acquisition. Respected auction houses like Christie's have discovered that these well-heeled car collectors should be courted. At four five, you bidding? A number of auctions take place at Pebble Beach, Amelia Island, Florida, Monaco, and other gathering spots for the exotic auto lovers. A new owner who will enjoy it. Bidding can become pretty heated as the prices soar. $320,000 at $360,000. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Last chance. Fair warning, then. Selling in the room at $920,000. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Not all exotic cars are old. Some, like the Panos, are currently being made in small numbers by people who have a passion for automobiles. Dan Paynos started the company in 1989 with two friends who shared his desire to build an innovative sports car. He's someone who believes that driving should be an experience, not simply a means of transportation. In 2000, the company launched the Esperante, a luxury sports car that is starting to appeal to buyers all around the world who want something different. Something unique that won't be seen idling next to them in traffic. This aluminum bodied car is powered by an all American Ford V8, making maintenance easy. Its 420 supercharged horses also make it easy to soar up the coast. While its racing-inspired suspension keeps it on course, it's clearly a car for people who love driving. It's even showing up on the track, racing in the American Le Mans series. It's like the classics of yore, such as the fabled Alfa Romeo 2.9s. Alfa Romeo built luxury sedans and sports roadsters that were equally at home on the road or racing during the 1920s and 30s. Drivers like world champion Phil Hill once raced 2.9s similar to the one he's testing here. 
The restoration of cars with a racing pedigree fueled the passion for historic racing and pushed up prices. This Alpha sold for over $5 million. Having a racing pedigree or a celebrity connection can put a car into the exotic category. Clark Gable and his pal, fellow actor Gary Cooper, shared a passion for the fast American luxury cars, the Duesenbergs. They each had a special one built that they would race down Sunset Boulevard after a night on the town. Hollywood glamour, blended with motoring heritage, is a potent mix for collectors. Some cars, like the Rolls-Royce Silver Ghost, the car that put the company on the map, have remained in corporate collections and are not for sale, no matter how much is offered. While this one-of-a-kind car is priceless, some estimate that it would probably fetch over $25 million. This Silver Ghost set the standard for all the Rolls-Royce cars that followed. Henry Royce believed in building a few perfect cars for people who could afford them. Exotic autos often end up in fabulous private collections, like the one assembled by a California developer who likes to display his hunting and auto collecting trophies. Some only collect certain makes, like Bugatti racing cars. If you have a beautiful car, why not build a subterranean showroom under your swimming pool, so you and your friends can admire automotive perfection? Or build an antique gas station to show off your $15 million Bugatti Royale. Owning an estate gives you the option of exercising your cars without leaving the grounds. For some, being able to drive these cars is one of the joys of collecting. How could you resist getting behind the wheel of a flashy supercharged Duesenberg? Hearing the engine and seeing how it looks on the road is part of the pleasure of owning one of these legendary cars. The public has the opportunity to see many of these cars at special museums around the world. One of the best is the Auburn Cord Duesenberg Museum in Auburn, Indiana. Housed in the restored Art Deco, former headquarters of the Auburn Cord and Duesenberg Company, the museum transports visitors back to the glory days of these cars. The museum has assembled a fabulous collection of cars that trace the short but glamorous history of the company from the 1920s to its demise in the late 1930s. Cars like the L29 Cord, the first production car with front wheel drive, created a buzz among elite buyers. The supercharged Auburn Speedsters were the cars to have for young playboys. It symbolized the freedom of the jazz age. These cars are all about romance. Like an ill-advised affair, collecting sometimes becomes more than romance. It can be downright self-destructive. The museum created in Mulhouse, France, from the holdings of the Schlump brothers, is a perfect example. The two textile barons were totally smitten with the cars of Ettore Bugatti. They bought and bought and bought until they had amassed the largest collection of Bugatti automobiles in the world. The secretive brothers never told anyone about their collection. When the workers in their factories found out that they were being asked to make wage concessions 
so more cars could be bought, they rioted. The French authorities subsequently discovered some tax irregularities, and the brothers' hidden illicit collection was appropriated by the state. It's been turned into a museum that contains some of the rarest cars in the world, including several Bugatti Royales. Only six Royales were built, and when sold, they can command upwards of 10 to 15 million dollars. The Schlumpf Museum is an amazing example of passion run amok that somehow has been turned into a gift to the public. While their auto obsessions contributed to the ruin of the Schlumpfs, the love of the world's most exclusive cars hasn't hurt J.B. Nethercutt. The Nethercutt Museum grew out of J.B.'s personal collection amassed over a lifetime. It started during the Depression, while he was going door to door selling beauty creams for his aunt, Meryl Norman. He and his soon-to-be wife, Dorothy, would stop and stare at the beautiful packets in the window of a Santa Monica dealership. They dreamed of one day owning such a fine car. After JB inherited the Merrill Norman Company, he was able to fulfill his automotive dreams. He built an outstanding museum in Silmar, California, to house his stunning cars. Guided tours provide a window into this wonderland. Visitors marvel at the palatial grand showroom called the Jewel Box by Nethercutt. Grand chandeliers make the room sparkle. Marble columns and marble floors glisten and complement his perfectly restored cars. The Nethercutt Museum is not to be missed. What most don't get to see is the enormous restoration facility Nethercutt also built. Here, his teams of artisans completely disassemble and restore his magnificent cars to a better than new condition. Everything can be recreated to exacting standards. Specialists transform the upholstery, woodwork, electrical systems and gauges using many of the original machines that built the cars. Like the one that wraps the wiring harness in colored thread. All of the mechanicals are either rebuilt or remanufactured often with very little documentation. Discovering how things work on classic exotic cars can require real detective work. There are always several projects underway. It takes a lot of time and effort to transform a car into something worthy of the main gallery at the Nethercutt collection. Most other collectors rely on independent restoration specialists like Randy Emer. Emer has amassed a collection of original blueprints for Duesenberg and Bugatti parts that takes some of the guesswork out of transforming his clients' cars into award winners. Emer can determine how the cars were built at the factory and recreate nearly any part that's beyond repair. His main interest has been Duesenberg's. You know, it is the biggest, the fastest, the most expensive automobile of the class of your So, you know, it is, it is a statement that we do not have today relative to automobiles. It is, you know, as, as fine a luxury car as could be made. Only 400 plus Duesenbergs were built between 1929 and 1937. They were cars for kings, movie moguls, stars, and the captains of industry. These people demanded the best, and Ema's clients do too. 
It takes hundreds of hours of hands-on labor to transform one of these classics into the show winners his team is noted for. It starts with a thorough inspection of the condition of the car. Ema knows just what to check, like the condition of the pop-up headlights on a cord. One of the perks of his job is getting the chance to actually drive these classics. But you don't have to be wealthy like Nethercut or a pro like Ema to restore an exotic car. Jay Human proved that his patient solo efforts could compete with the big boys when the 1922 Hispano Suiza he'd restored himself took the grand prize at Pebble Beach. He's continued to restore cars for himself since winning in 1972. Like many individual collectors, Human specializes in one car. He's positively besotted by the Hispano Suiza. The payoff is always the chance to go for a drive, something he loves to do whenever he can. Many exotic auto owners dream of having their car invited to the annual show at Pebble Beach. Every August, the golf course in front of the lodge at Pebble Beach is transformed for the world's grandest one-day car show. This spectacular setting is perfectly suited for showing off the finest cars ever built and the finest restorations. It's a chance to see cars you'd never see anywhere else. Thousands come to gawk and soak up the elegant atmosphere. Everyone loves old cars. When we're out with them, driving them, people are smiling, uh, point to them, uh, have their children wave, ask to hear the horn honk. It's just people love antique cars. Taking a trip to Pebble Beach is a guarantee that you'll see some great cars. It's kind of a big grand reunion of the car community. I call it Mecca, you know, once you're here, you have to come back every year. Pebble Beach has spawned a number of related events that have transformed the one-day car show into a long weekend of outstanding car events. The Concorso Italiano is held the Friday before Sunday's Pebble Beach Concours. It's the perfect response to anyone's need to see spectacular cars like Lamborghinis, Ferraris, Alfa Romeos and more. But the main show is still Pebble Beach. Entrants start unloading their cars before sunrise on the Sunday of the show. These million dollar babies are trailered and pampered by crews of experts who've labored to create the perfect car. Arriving before the cars emerge is a great way to get a free preview of what will be seen at the show. By eight o'clock, the grounds are filling up as the cars start to arrive. Within a short time, the judges descend on the cars. It's really a beauty contest, so you're looking to find cars that, uh, that are really attractive. Um, it isn't about cleanliness. You can have blades of grass and tires, and you can have signs that obviously someone's driven a car, but uh, this is really a beauty contest, so we're looking for the best and most beautiful examples of, um, of each car. Once your car mates the cut, so it is unique, then it all gets down to condition and the amount of time and uh, money spent on authenticity and uh, I have no idea what the average cost is, but it's got to be in the six figures for a restoration. 
The prestige of winning at Pebble Beach keeps the entrance working right up to the end. I think it's probably the greatest car show in the world. I mean, there's all kinds of different car shows. This is the real, you know, this is the millionaires versus the billionaires car show. So it's the little people versus the big people. Uh, yeah, but this is the big fancy. I mean, there are a lot of great car shows, and a lot of people pick on this one for being sort of too extravagant, but that, it's the only one like it, so that, that's cool, and that's, and that's fun. And they're, this is sort of the, the heavyweight division, you know, and, and, and it's, uh, I find it very exciting. I mean, you, it's, it's the more money than Brains Club. There's only one best of show trophy awarded every year. The judges argue right up to the end. Well, I just came out of the, the judges' meeting upstairs, and there's some pretty serious faces up there. I mean, this is serious business. The judges that come in take it very, very seriously. But every year, they do reach agreement, and finally, the waiting is over. It's certainly beginning to build. The winner of the 49th annual Pebble Beach Concorde d'Elegance is Martin Walter. Winning the top prize for the owner of an exotic auto is a moment to savor. And one that can increase the value of your car quite a bit. Or if you're a restorer, let you up your fees. Winning beauty contests isn't enough for the owners of some exotic autos. They want to race their priceless cars. Monterey's Laguna Seca Raceway hosts the most famous historic race every year on the same weekend as the Pebble Beach Concours. It's become a must attend for fans and for collectors of classic sports and race cars. When you see whatever the car is that sort of lit your fire somewhere, I mean, the opportunity to buy one of those cars and save that history and then drive it um, is a lot better than hanging a picture on the wall and just looking at it. Even if you don't own one of the classic races, it's possible to get close to them in the pits. You begin to understand why the owners drive their million-dollar treasures. It's just a thrill to, uh, to drive these cars and uh, uh, you know, that's what they're here for, and that's what they were made for, so, uh, so and that's what I do with them. It's easy to be transported back to the early days of European Grand Prix racing, and imagine yourself at the wheel, dueling to the finish. The popularity of historic racing for exotic car owners has spread. With Ferrari's help, clubs rent tracks and run a series of events that allow collectors to race their classic Ferraris. The Ferrari Challenge travels around the world and drivers can gather points in a number of categories. But the real point seems to be just having the chance to take your car out and go fast. Why own a fast and expensive exotic Ferrari if you can't see what it will do? Whatever your interest, there's a way to enjoy the world's exotic autos. There are great museums that contain the most beautiful cars ever built. There are also events that let you get up close to one-of-a-kind cars. It's a spectacular world that's open to everyone. You don't have to be rich to enjoy these cars, but if you do win the lotto, we just might see you behind the wheel of one of these exotic autos.